Hello, everybody. So, if you watch some of my videos on my channel, you might have came across two videos I did. One of them was a year ago. I think a year ago now. Maybe. I'm not too sure. And one was coming up on a year ago. I'm not too sure. One maybe seven months ago, but it was buying guy on the N64 first, and then the GameCube. And now I'm doing one on the NES. So yeah, let's just get into it. And you might hear something in the background. That's my washer. And I won't have any fucking clean clothes. Well, no clean clothes with you know pants and shirts, basically. So I'm cleaning that right now in the washer. So if you hear any noise in the background, that's why. So let's start off with a little um, knowledge, I guess, about the NES. So the NES was made in 1985. Well, not made in 1985, but it was distributed. Distributed to America in 1985. What the fuck? In 1985. So, that's a time period that you should remember for what I'm about to show you. Alright. So, right there. Focus. God damn it, guy. There you go. That is an RF switch, which was used to connect, for example, the Atari 2600 to a TV, which is really bad quality. Basically, what you would do is that you would plug in, you would plug in a cord right there, then you would plug in the other side of the cord into an RF box, or RF switch, or whatever. And then, you would, okay, and then, what you would do is that you would screw it into the back of your TV. It would either come up on channel 3 or 4, and this switch would determine that. And I've been noticing lately that a lot more people have been getting into collecting video games, specifically old ones. And back then, a lot of people played their NES through RF. And today, I've never seen a TV with RF on it. Never. So, you know, it's very hard to hook up an AS through RF. But luckily, they decided to put this. This is composite inputs. Move that over. And this is how I hook up my AS. So this is how I hook up my NES, and if you have a, if you have a CRT and some good composite cables, this is the best way to go without any modding. And of course, there's a ton of mods for the NES for the video, but you know this is how I hook up mine, and it looks pretty good. And on the front, you have. Shit, don't do that. Alright, one second. I need to go get something.
Sorry about that. I'm trying to use this pill to soften the sound a little bit. I mean, it's fucking falling, so I just put some electrical tape on it. So on the front, you have a power reset button, a reset button, and two controller ports. And this is where you plug in your games. And this is where the console usually fails. Specifically this model. Now, you see, when you play, when you try to play a game, when you try to play a game, okay, well, what the fuck is this shit? Okay, sorry. But when you try, when you play a game, you plug it in like that, okay, you push it in, and you push it down. And that bends the pins. And eventually the pins will get bent into place, not creating enough tension for the console to actually work and to play the games. And that's where the notorious blinking red light comes from. That's where the notorious blue screen comes from. Signaling a bad connection. And there's many ways to fix that. I'm pretty sure I made a couple videos on it before. So try to go find that. If I haven't, sorry. I'll have a get on that. But anyways, that's where the console usually fails and of course there's some other problems you know burnt out chips you know i bought a broken console thinking that i could fix it and it turns out that it has a bad pbu so you know i mean the problem is is that these consoles are old now for example for atari 2600s you know, those things are starting to die, okay? And it's not because of faulty technology, nothing like that. They're just getting really old. You know, if someone bought a launch day 2600, you know, by now, it's going to need some maintenance very soon. Because, you know, capacitors are in every single game console that I know of. And they usually last over 25 to 30 years. And think about it, the Atari 2600 was first released in 1976. A console from then, you know, by 19... No, like, by 2006, it will be 30 years old. And right now, one of those consoles is 40... Like, 41, 42 years old. So they're going to need some maintenance eventually. And the AES is actually starting to come around to that time. So, you know, eventually, you know, the console's going to break. And that means that you'll either have to do some maintenance, someone else will have to do some maintenance. You know, eventually it's going to stop working, is what I'm trying to say. You know, unless you take really good care of it, it's not going to last too much longer. And again, you know, a launch day system from 1985 is 30 years old from 2015. Bleh. From 2015, ah, fuck my neck. From 2015. So, you know, the masters are eventually going to die. And I think that's one of my problems. Because, you know, I get a white screen sometimes. Most of the time when my games don't work. And I've took out the CIC. And that's another point. And I, I made another one of these. But I haven't uploaded it. And I didn't even talk about that. So, in the AS, there's a certain chip that determines whether a game is fake or not. And by now, that chip in most systems is dying. And that means that your real games that work perfectly fine won't work anymore because the console thinks that it's a, it's a fake game. Which means that... <clears throat> Sorry. Which means that most consoles that don't work might be that. That might be the problem. I'm sorry that I'm moving the camera so much. But that might be the problem. And it's really easy to disable. For example, you can take out one of the pins, which will completely kill it. Or you could desolder it. 
or do like I did and just tear the chip out of the board. So you know. So let's see. What's next? So yeah, controllers. No, real quick, let me get up one of my controllers. Just want to make it look nice. This is what a NES controller looks like. Okay, let me back it up a little bit. Push that back a little. Alright. This is what classic N60. This is what a classic NES controller looks like. And simple. It's a great controller, and I can't think of any flaws. You know, I these controllers are getting kind of expensive now. You know, for two controllers, it can be around twenty dollars. So you know, if you if you want to collect for that NES, I recommend that you get a pair of controllers or find a good deal on them or something like that. Cause they're starting to get a little expensive, a little bit. What the hell is that? Something in my damn butt. And you no, know, if you don't like this controller, you're not stuck with it because of course you have that common third-party controller. And also, you have the dog ball controller, which I don't have. They're actually kind of expensive, around $40, just for one of them. And they're kind of like a Super Nintendo controller, only for the NES. Now, they don't have any shoulder buttons, they only have two buttons, but they're very comfortable from right here. Now, let me show you another controller that I have. Let me make this one look nice. The Nintendo Zapper. So this controller is used for a lot of games. And if you don't have it, I recommend that you get it. Because I like duck hunts, and I think you do. But it's a very nice controller. And it's also a great idea. And another thing is that I've heard a lot of... Of stories that these things are starting to die and you know I've heard I've heard of this one guy with the channel and this problem is that sometimes this controller just doesn't work like it knows that you know he pulls the trigger but nothing happens on the screen like you don't hit it you know you don't hit the target and let me see if I can show you uh, yeah. You see that right at the end? That's a laser. And I would assume eventually those are going to die. Which is probably why sometimes it doesn't work. Or it could just be the trigger is bad. You know, a ton of things can be wrong with it. But it's a great controller. And there's a great one that was released like with the console right at the beginning. I don't have that one. As you can see, I got the orange one. But, you know, yeah. You're going to want it. And if you're using your NES on an HT, bleh, on HDTV, you cannot use this. Because if you try it on an HDTV, nothing's going to happen. Try it on CRT, it will work. Because the CRTs have a very light, very bright beam inside of it that, you know, makes the light gun available to do it. To do what it needs to do. Alright. Sorry about my brother being an asshole. Right, but, anyways, let's start with some games. Well, now let's start. You know, let's show some games that I have. Some of my favorite games. Alright, so let's start off with this one Snake Rowan Rule. Now, I've heard that a lot of people don't like this game, and it's for understandable reasons, and I only have one problem with it. It's weird, but I only have one problem with it. Every now and then, you, the, bleh, every now and then, you can collect these things that invert the controls, and sometimes that fucks me up. But that's my only complaint about it. It's really fun, it's a platforming game, and it's made by one of my favorite companies. 
See if you'll focus. Fuck ass. I almost had it. <sighs> rare. See? It's made by Rare. In 1990. But you know, if it's rare, I automatically have to try it. Because it's rare. Alright. Next one's a classic. So, if you've played any Mario game, and if you're a fan of any Mario game, you've probably heard of this one. Mario 3. And this game is amazing. Okay? It's a pretty long game. And there are the warp whistles. But that's beside the point. This is a very, very fun game. And it's also one of the best looking games on the NES. And the game now, you know, given that more people are starting to collect video games, retro video games, more people are going to want this because it's a good game. So, if you're collecting for NES, I recommend that you buy this. Uh, next up is... Super Mario and Duck Hunt. Yeah, I don't know if this is cheating, but this is my top six favorite games that I own. So, you know, I'm going to cheat, because these are two games in one. And this is actually the real cartridge. This is what they're supposed to look like. So, yeah, you know, this is a great game. Super Mario Brothers is a great game, okay? And so is Duck Hunt. And these are pretty cheap now. I mean, you know, way back in, like, maybe 2006. So it's on for a dollar. But now they're around twelve dollars. And it's not a bad deal. It's also not a bad game. Well, not bad. Two games. Oh fuck. One second. Where the hell did Mario 3 go? Alright. How about we get into the puzzle games? This one is. Tetris! This is a very, very fun game. Plus, it never ends. And you might know it from its Game Boy counterpart. This is the better one. Now, that one's for home, that one's for to go. And this game's not too expensive, too. It's around $11 on eBay. And it's a puzzle game. So what's not to love? You're not gonna fall, too. Alright. Next up is Dr. Mario. So, this is another puzzle game, and I like it a lot. If you've played Tetris 2, this is kind of what it's like. Only, you have to take out the viruses with mat by matching their colors. Great game, not too expensive either. Alright. Now, for the final game that I have. Here. It is... The Legend of Zelda. This is an amazing game. And the game is very expensive now. Around forty dollars. I know to most that I know to most that's not very expensive, but it is to me, okay? And I bought this for about thirteen dollars and it was broken and I fixed it. And it's a great game. Okay. If you don't have it, I recommend that you get it. And you know, again it's expensive. And you might be thinking, okay, it might be like, you might buy it for $13, but it looks horrible. It looked, it looked worse, okay? Someone took a Sharpie and drew all over this thing. I'm talking all over the front. And I cleaned it off, and all the remaining black shit, I can't get off. I don't know what it is. 
All right, so that's the six, six of my favorite NES games that I, that I have. Now let's go on to the games that I want, okay? So first off, Ghosts and Goblins. That is a very hard game, but it's also a pretty fun one too. And it's not too hard, it's around $15 these days. I've seen from, yeah, I've seen some for cheaper, I've seen some for more, but it's around that. Next is Ninja Gaiden. One or two. I've heard both of them are great. I've played the first one a little bit. And, you know, good game, from what I've heard. Next is a Mega Man game. So, Mega Man is a great series. I played the second one. I loved it. And I've won it. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Castlevania. The first one, specifically. I have played the first Castlevania, and I loved it. And it's a very, very hard game. I'm just going to say that. So is the third one. Finally, Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. Or Mr. Dream's Punch-Out. They're the same game, just different people at the end. Specifically, Mike Tyson's Punch-Out is one that I'd love to have. And I've played I've played Mr. Dream's Punch-Out on the Classic Edition, because that's what it was. And the game is around $30. You know, $36, close to that. Very great game. Worth it, too. So, that's about it. I know there's a ton of games out there that I don't know if they're good or not, and eventually I will find them and try them, but until then, I'm just going to stick with what I know. So thank you for watching this video, tomorrow I go back to school, and I'll see you later.